Hello everyone, this is Sukubu no Solitori from Sukubu's Artsy Things and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different but I hope still enjoyable at the same time and that is the Van Gogh watercolor dot card making sure it's in frame here I got the 72 color dot card that Lit Flick has. And we're going to be swatching all of these colors. Today, and what I did is I put some black waterproof ink in each of the squares just to show how transparent or not this is. and. With each color that I have, I just did a yellow mark just to remind myself. And I believe that is all. I'm going to be painting this swatch card with a size 6 Foss Girl by Dynasty. Got my water, got my dab sheet here. I use bamboo paper because you could reuse it multiple times. And let's just get right to it. If you hear anything in the background, it's just family or I have my two dogs back here with me that are napping and moving around and all of that fun stuff. So, anywho, first up is Chinese white. This color seems to be, take a little bit to activate. Glad I did the line there. Is white, is white, and doesn't show up against other white very well. So yeah, opaque white. That one is easier to rewet. Chinese white is PW four, by the way. And opaque white is PW6. This is tit titanium buff, which is a combination of PW6 and PBR7. That color looks. <laughs> Excuse me, that color looks semi transparent. Permanent Lemon Yield. This is a color that I have. A very bright lemony yellow, as it says. Next one is oh, and Permanent Lemon Yellow is PY184. Transparent yellow medium is PY128. They have these rather small, and that's something that I would kind of comment about with the um, pigment numbers. Is maybe in the future they print them a little larger so it's easier to read. It's a very transparent yellow. Azo Yellow Light is PY154 and PW6. This one seems a little tricky to rewet, but you can give it a little bit. And there it goes.
making sure it's still in the focus here. Angel Yellow Medium. This is a combination of three pigments. PY154, PW6, and PO62. That one re wets nicely. I would almost say that it's like a sunbursty type of yellow. Azo Yellow Deep is another triple pigment mix of PY154, PW6, and PO43. Having scrub quite a bit on this one, I think. There we go. We'll just see how far we get with this today. Gamboge. Gamboge is one of those colors that I have had for a long time. This is PY. 154 and PO48. I think it's a lovely color. I also find it doesn't really matter if a color is a mix or not for my taste. If a color is pretty and it serves its purpose, then that's just fine. I'm not pigmentist in that sense. I don't know. That's a way of putting it, but I'm not one of those that has to be a single pigment to be on my palette kind of people. Up next is Indian Yellow, a PY83. This one just re wets right away, like I barely had to touch it. Naples Yellow Red. This is one of my favorite colors from the Earth Tone range. PY42, PO43. I like to mix it with some quinacridone rose and burnt sienna and it just makes some lovely skin tones. I don't know if I mentioned it's PY42 and PO43. Permanent orange. I don't know what happened with this dot for it to be way down there. This is PY154 and PO73. Taking a bit of work to get it happy. This is a color that I have in my palette. It's a nice, almost I want to say pumpkin orange. I don't know what's going on with this color here though. There we go. Normally I find this color Oh, there was a piece of paper from the vellum sheet that this came with. That might have been part of the problem. Oh, yeah. Now the color's happy. It's a nice sunset kind of orange. Up next is P Roll Orange. This is single pigment PO73. I like to call this orange like a poison mushrooms orange or because 
it is just so bright. I'm not sure how well my camera is going to catch that brightness. That next is Vermilion. This is PR255 and PO73. Some of these colors so far have still had enough paint left over that I can do a little sketch study with them like that. These yellows and so that's nice. The next color is single pigment. It is permanent red light. PR255. This is a color that's in the 4810 set. That is a nice, almost like a fire engine red. Next is Permanent Red Deep, PR149. Rewets nicely. And a lot of these colors are non-granulating. Part of what I like about Van Gogh too is they're very good for layering. This color, Matter Lake White, looks like there's some paper from the vellum again on here. Maybe I'll be able to just scrub that away. Maybe this will come back to life on its own. There we go. Come on, you lovely. The other thing about this that was kind of annoying is it came with a protective sheet around it and some of it didn't come off of all of the all the way from the colors properly so this is a lovely rosy kind of red matter like light PR2 64 and PR 254. Focus here, matter like deep, single pigment, PR 264. Ah, this is mildly annoying. So, I would suggest maybe they find a different kind of material that doesn't, or a different way of protecting these that doesn't stick to the paint quite as well as this did. There we go. Like deep. This is almost like an alizarin crimson color. Fellow pigment nerds will be able to inform me because I'm not exactly an expert. I'm still learning my pigments. Oh. There we go. Up next is Carmine. This is PR-176, one of my favorite colors I had in a past palette. Lovely pinkish carmine. The 
This is quinacridone rose. It's in the 48 set, PV19. This is one of the colors that I said is good for mixing with the maple's yellow red and for getting some pinkish skin tones. Let's get that feeling paper out of the way. And see how pale it gets over here and how deep it can get there. This is Rose coming up here, PR122. One of my favorite new colors from them. I believe this was released just in the last couple of years when they did all of their dusky colors and their new turquoise blue and green. Which is on this list, by the way. Permanent Red Violet, PV19. This is a lovely color. Permanent Blue Violet, PY, no wait, PV23, yeah, I really would like if they had the um, pigment info just a bit larger. That's my cat hollering in the background, if you can hear him. He likes to do his cater rolling about this time of day. You see how lovely deep violet that it gets, almost like a diacosine violet when it's layered up. And then just a very pale down here. Up next is quinacridone purple red, which is PV55. I love their purple range, it's very versatile. See how lovely that almost pinkish purple that quinacridone purple red is with red undertones. This is quinacridone purple blue PV55. There we go. I had a dickens of a time getting the paper sheet off, or the vellum sheet, whatever it was, before recording this. And somehow I don't think it should be quite that difficult. Lavender is PB. 29, PV15, and PW6. It's one of my favorite colors. It almost looks like it's a dead ringer for the Daniel Smith color, so if you're version of it, so if you're looking for maybe a um, dupe or something that's less expensive, this might be an option for you because Daniel Smith is a lot more expensive. I know this is a higher student grade, um, low artist grade um, watercolor, but this is a very pretty 
lavender. I've already used it a few times in the 48 palette set. Um, up next is Ultramarine Deep, which is your standard PV29. This has some of the paper on it again, because in the palette that I have, this color re-wets really easy. Like, I just barely have to touch the watercolors to it. I'm starting to get into the blues here. There we go. Sorry about this, guys. This ultramarine, yeah, see, now that just re-wet, I just barely had to touch it. I've never done one of these sheets before, so this is quite fun. I just had to check and make sure I was still in frame here for you. Up next is Cobalt Blue Ultramarine with a mix of PB29 and PW6. This one, you have to work it a little bit. These dot charts are really handy. I've seen other videos of people swatching like the Daniel Smith dot chart or Schmincke dot chart and it just really spoke to me as being quite handy for figuring out what colors you like from a range. This is Cerulean Blue Thalo which is a mix of PB15 and PW6. Get that paper. There we go. Starting to get better at that. This is an opaque blue. I would say like semi opaque. They list it as transparent, but as you can see, with that line that I put there, that is actually more opaque. Yeah, because that box says transparent, but no, that's opaque. Thalo Blue is PB15. One of my favorite blues in the 48 pan set. You can mix some really lovely shades of blue-green with this and phthalo green, even viridian. Prussian blue is PB27. Excuse me. This color works great for layering, so you can do really light washes or get it really deeply intense when it dries up. Up next is one of my favorite dark blues, Indigo, PB15 and PBK6. This color is great for galaxy painting. I use it combined with their Payne's Gray all the time. I'll probably go back and add another layer to that once it dries. Turquoise Blue is the next. PB15 and PG7. This has some paper on it. Just hold on a sec while I get that off. There we 
we go. Voila. An annoying paper, but I'm working around it. I just fell in love with this color when I saw other people swatching it when they got the new color ranges from Van Gogh after they were released last year so I was glad to finally have that in my palette range turquoise green is PB15 and PB29 so it's the same PB15 from turquoise blue it's just a different blue they mixed it with and obviously this is more meaning more like a tealy sort of green I haven't used this color as much as I've used the turquoise blue, but it's definitely a very pretty color. And now we're moving into the greens. And these next two have some of that annoying paper on them. Permanent yellowish green is PY154 and PG7. Let me do, 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 and boom. This is a favorite green of mine. It's so bright and pretty. Get the cat hair out of there. Up next is Hooker's Green Light. PG7 and P. Y54. Get this paper off here. Starting to get the hang of this, and then scrub, scrub. Re wet's really nice. I think they should definitely think about doing something else to protect the paints. I'm not sure what anyone else's experience with this has been, but really annoying my first go around with these. Up next is Hooker's Green Deep. This is one another one of my favorite greens. PG7. PY54. So you can see it just re wets barely a touch of water there. Picture in focus. Permanent green. PG7 and PY154. That paper came off pretty nicely and fast. Might be able to do this if swatching in one setting. That would be great. Up next is Viridian. This is one of the few Viridians that I actually like, which is PG7. It's kind of more of a bluish undertone, I would say. Up 
Next is Thalo Green, PG7. Yeah, that's definitely Thalo Green, a very transparent color. And it just works really well with the layering. Sap Green, PY. PY 129 and PG7 has some annoying paper on it. But this is a very lovely sap green color. There we go. Another color that's on the 48 palette. It's great for landscaping and see a lot of artists use this color. Green, PG7, and PY54. Yeah, it's definitely olive green. Azo Methine Green Yellow PY129. This one is in a 48 pan set, and I find I use this one fairly often for highlights and grass and things. Even seaweed color is a good highlight for seaweed and undersea paintings. Yellow ochre, PY42. Yellow ochre is yellow ochre. Just not a fan of this color, although it's more transparent than some yellow ochres I've seen. Raw sienna has some of that paper on it, so gotta wet it and nudge it this color is great for sand and trees etc there we go Now you can do it. And earth tones, raw umber, PY42 and PR101. It's another one in the 48 pan set kind of color for bark and trees and again landscaping color burnt sienna PR 101 I love that this is just a single pigment burnt sienna I know I said earlier that I'm not pigmentist, but there are some colors that I think are great just as single pigment, and this is definitely one of them. As soon as I get this annoying bit of paper off, there we go.
you can be a really rich burnt sienna tone there. Light oxide red. This is a color I've not had in any of my other paint ranges except for maybe my acrylic paint. This is PR 101. I found this great for doing rocks and just adding some different color tones to mix things up a bit. Er, er. Artist joke. Burnt Umber PBR7. Fairly self explanatory. It's a nice chocolatey kind of a color. Sepia has some of that paper on it. Still a nice, rich, deep sepia color. I was really torn between getting the Van Dyke Brown or sepia when I got the paints in my last haul, but you can, you can mix a sepia with a little bit of black and burnt umber because this is PVK7 and PR101, so it's still a lovely color on this dot card. Van Dyke Brown, this is the color that I wound up getting. I've had this before in my other palettes, and I love doing this for like dark brown hair. It just adds a little extra something. To my paintings that I like. This is the color that, this is the Van Dyke Brown that really got me to actually appreciate um, this color and what it can do. Payne's Gray. This is PBK6 and PV19. This is the color that I said that I like to combine with my indigo for galaxy paintings, night skies, etc. Davies Gray this is probably one of my least favorite grays. I just don't like it. And there's the paper here that I'm trying to get off. Maybe one of you guys can help me find a reason to like this color, but right now it is my least favorite grays. I can make a very nice light gray with Payne's gray, a little bit of white, and some cerulean blue. Let me water it down, but it's just like this. It's there. That's my little spiel. Davies Gray is a mix of PBK11, PG7, and PBR7. The neutral tint, I've been using their neutral tint a lot lately. Get the paper off. I just find it to be a very lovely version of it. Go. I'm gonna have to scoot you guys up a bit. Yeah. We're going into Oxide Black, which is just PBK11. And it's an alright color. It's in the uh, 48 pan set. I 
my favorite black is ivory black or I also like to mix burnt umber and indigo and it gets you a nice deep color. Excuse me. So up next is ivory black PBK 9. Sometimes if I'm doing character designs or just doing outfit sketches and I want to color them in, ivory black is a good, almost leathery color. Now we're getting into the specialties here. As you can see, the dusk colors actually have all of these. Excuse me, I had to get a drink here. I actually have all of the desk colors and a few of these metallic colors. And I can say they are very fun. Dusk yellow was one that I wasn't sure about, but it's actually really grown on me. My favorites out of the dusk colors are probably the dusk pink, dusk violet, and dusk green. Dusk yellow is PR 101, by the way. Dusk pink is a combination of PBK 11 and PB 19. I will definitely, most likely, be buying tubes of these when I start running low in my pan set. Such lovely deep colors. Dusk Violet is PVK 11 and PV 23. Sometimes I love using this just on its own. And it's kind of like a neutral tint sort of color when it's watered down too. Dust green, this one has paper on it. Let me try and get that off really quick. This color I find is a great seaweedy kind of color or deep emerald tree kind of color. There we go. And it just re-wets just like that. PBK-7 and PG-7. And now, we're on to the shiny paints. I put a bit bigger of a black line on these, because I know some of these they will shine differently, like the interference colors will shine differently on black. These take a bit more scrubbing to work the colors around. The uh, metallic silver is metallic silver, as you can see. This is actually a mix of four colors, PW20, PW15, PW6, and PBK11, plus the mica or whatever they use. Light gold is next. That's also, most of these are four pigments, the metallics. Um, light gold is PW20, PW15, PW6, and PVK 101. I don't know why they added some black to 
metallic gold, this light gold, but it's a very pretty color. I love their metallics. I'll probably be getting at least a couple more metallics after doing the swatching. They just add a little something extra to paintings that I like. This is deep gold, PW20, PW15, and PW6, and PVK101. I just think they added a bit more of the darker tones to get this different shade of gold. Making sure you're in focus here. Almost down to the last of the colors here. And I have to, uh, there we go. Here is bronze, which is PW20, PW15, PW6, and PVK101 again. These all re-wet decently enough for them being metallic colors. The fine tech ones, which I also have, they need to be soaked for a bit before and then scrubbed vigorously before you can really get the juiciness of the colors. These just take a bit of water and boom, color. This is copper, PW20, PW15, PW6, PVK101. This color is in the 48 set. I've never had a copper color before. So that one's new to me. These are all semi-transparent. Graphite is PW20, PW15, PW6, and PVK101. And yeah, that is a graphite color. I say it's like a dark silver, which is, eh, that's okay. Interference white, we're getting into the interference colors now. This is PW20, PW15, and PW6. This one is in the 48 pan set. What I like about Interference White is I'm able to pick a different color and add it to this and mix my own Interference colors if I want. Interference Yellow. The Interference colors seem to be three pigments. The metallics were four. So this is PW20, PW15, and PW6. Interference yellow, it just looks like a shade of light gold. Like a light yellow gold. This is where we get to the fun colors. Not that these aren't fun, but these are more so. Interference red, PW20, PW15, and PW6. These co interference colors may look plain on white, but when you move it to the black, that's where the colors really, quite literally, shine. And then you get this peachy kind of color, or pinky, peachish color in white. Interference blue, 
Okay, so next, that's a color that's in the 48 pan set. And I love it. It's one of my favorite metallic colors. I think there must be some paper on this. Yeah. This color in the pan, it just re wets, lickety split. And boom, you get color. Just like that. And it's got this beautiful iridescent blue, with almost an electric blue sheen to it. And I've been using it on my mermaids for mermaid. Iridescent violet, PW20, PW15, and PW6. This is one of the colors that I might get in the future. Just to have it on its own. I love the interference colors. Again, you get a pinkish color in white, but when it goes to black, yeah, I'm glad I put the black stripes on these because then I can really see the colors. Interference green. This is the last color. This has some paper on it. Of course it does. Let me just grab that off. And then On the white, it, in real life, it looks like a pale, sparkly, minty green. And then it really turns electric on black. These colors are so fun. I'll hopefully be able to get a good look at these colors for you on camera here in a bit. Alright, that is these colors all swatched out. Let's go back to the top here so I can show you. This has been a very long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. It's probably the longest video I've done. Oh, almost an hour, yeah. These are the colors that are dried. I'm trying to show you up close here. So you can see and make your own decisions. I really love the turquoise colors. Let's see if I can't get this piece of paper off. And then greens, earth tones I really like too. And there's still quite a bit of paint left over after the swatching too. If I wanted to do some studies, here is the iridescence and the interference. I'm trying to get. They're all really good colors, especially the interference colors. I really love those. So shiny. And that is the duck card for Van Gogh watercolors. 72 colors. A couple things I would like to bring up is the fact that the pigment numbers are really tiny on here. I would suggest that they uh, make it a bit larger in the future and having to scrub little bits of the paper off was really annoying as I was going along with this 
swatching because I've had this sheet here. You can see where it stuck as I was trying to peel it off. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like that, but yeah. Otherwise, this was really fun and I really love seeing the rainbow of color and I feel like I still have enough to do some larger swatching or sketching after because some of these dots are really quite large like the Sucre's green light like at that and even with some of the iridescent colors there's still quite a bit here left over these are really nice higher-end student grade paints or even I would say low lower-end um, artist grade quality because you do have light fastness here one to three star rating so three stars is excellent light fastness and two star is less so and I don't think there's any one star um, color here just a few two stars like the rose and the carmine which I mean that's to be expected and most of these are three star which I can really appreciate even the iridescent colors let me go back here these have three star ratings I don't know if anyone's done any tests with those and their light fastness but that is a thing to look at too and then the dusk colors obviously the dusk pink would be a two star rating and the dusk violet is a two star rating but these two are three stars so say my favorite of the blues would be like the turquoise blue and green the indigo is a lovely color and cerulean I find I've been using a lot for like skies or undersea colors and then for I just love their purple ranges and the reds and yellows too really fun colors all in all this is a all right dot chart and just a couple of things here and there that I would work to improve on thank you so much for sticking with me this far I hope you enjoyed this swatch-a-thon as I was going through and talking about each of the colors like the nerd that I am and I will see y'all in my next video. I hope everyone is staying safe and keeping up with whatever they are intending to do during this troubling time and hope y'all have a good day, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're at and happy arting. Bye.